Welcome to Upa Homo Africa, a podcast about life and politics on the continent. I'm Kimmy Dion, one of your hosts. I'm excited to introduce this week's episode, the first one produced by non-resident fellows Fu Asedu and Ami Tamaklo. Imagine otherworldly visitors have landed on Earth and are trying to learn about and understand Ghana and its politics. This episode provides a people's political history, and Ghanaian voices talk about its political present and their dreams for the country's future. They don't just share what they think about former leaders like the father of independence, Kwame Nkrumah, or about the two main political parties, the New Patriotic Party, the NPP, and the National Democratic Congress, the NDC. These Ghanaians, who hail from different regions of the country, also talk about specific policies, like President Nana Kufa-Addo's policy proposal years ago when he was running for office. He's widely remembered for proposing to make secondary education, or being able to go to senior high schools, SHS, for free. And we also get to hear about a third party that has recently emerged, dubbed the New Force. Have a listen and get acquainted with Ghana in this month that it's celebrating its independence and get ready for the upcoming elections in December. Once upon a time, two beings visited a country called Ghana. Hi. Hello. Are you heading to Ghana? Yes. Me too. Want to go together? The two beings enter the country. It seemed peaceful. I think it would be nice to know more about the place. Who are these people? I'm from Ghana and the northern region to be precise, Tamale. I'm from Kwewu Ebitifi. It's a, it's a town in the eastern region of Ghana. I'm from Eja number two, that is in the central region. But I live in Tamale. I was actually born in Tamale. I am from Chewia Palsi. I was born in the barracks. My mom is Ghana, my dad is Ewe. I'm from Lambuse. It's a very small village, almost out of Ghana in the Upper West region. Looks like they are celebrating their independence today. Can you tell us about Ghana's Independence Day? It's a day Ghana got uh, or gained their independence. So they celebrate it to honor, I mean, their freedom. Um, Nkrumah got a big idea and decided that we needed to be free from oppression and the white man's rule. So therefore, we were capable of, you know, handling our own affairs. We gained independence in 1957, some months around March. And um, this year, 2024, makes it 67 years. Ghana got independence in 1957. Um, Dr. Kwame Nkorma, he, he fought and Ghana got independence in 1957. I know Ghana, we gained independence in 1957. Um, during that time, it was the late president, that's Dr. Kwame Nkorma, who was in charge during that time. So he was the one who actually led into um, the freedom of Ghana. We normally have a yearly celebration that we do for the Independence Day, that is the self March. So anytime it is self March, we use that particular day to celebrate our independence as a country. They kept mentioning this Nkrumah guy. I wonder who he is. He's a great person in Ghanaian history. He fought for our independence. He's a good person and a great person to be handed. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah has been the best president we can actually think of. You know, for him, he he was actually leading the country, not out of what he will gain, but out of what he will actually do for the country. So looking at his time, things were actually, you know, doing very well. Things were actually, you know, like really happening. He was really developing the place and stuff. So to me, I think Kwame Nkrumah is one of the best we can think of. And actually, after his regime, I don't think there has ever been any president or any person like him that Ghana will actually boast of and say this person is, in one way or the other, imitating that of what Kwame Nkrumah did for the country. Yeah, so Kwame Nkrumah is the best, I'll say. Sometimes I feel like maybe she... He should have tried the essay approach where 
even though we gained our independence, the white man was still there, you know, to help sort things out because honestly, I feel like when we sacked them completely and we had to do things on our own, we, I don't think we were ready for the development of the way he was thinking. It's like he was the only one with a big idea and then the rest of the people following him were not like championing the agenda. So even though he had everything in here in his mind, we, we, we saw some come to life, but since life is short, we didn't see everything come to life. So I would say that if he had allowed the, maybe the white men to stay behind a bit to help us, you know, with the technology and everything, maybe things would have moved faster and most of his ideas would have been accomplished. I don't know anything. Just what I know is he fought and Ghana got independent on the 1957. My background is still very political. I try to stay clear of it. But I was brought up to think that all wasn't really as it seemed to be because then my grandfather had his side of the story um, and he didn't portray him as a hero we all see today because um, Nkrumah literally wanted to bully him to join in his camp. And each time he said no, then he would be at home and then they would just pick him up and go and throw him in some cell for like some two or three weeks and then they'll release him until the next thing comes up and then they pick him up again. So generally to the people, a great hero, but directly related to my family, not such a hero. I feel um, Nkrumah has, has done something great for Ghana. And you see our beloved country is free forever, but come on, we are not free. We're still borrowing money and all that. I feel he left something powerful. Look at the motorway, the Akosombu Dam and all that. And his boys, the people he left position for, are not doing the right thing. So I feel Nkrumah did a very good work before he passed away. The two beings were curious to know if the country had stayed the same since Nkrumah. So they asked the people. Never. I'll say it again, never. Because looking at what Nkrumah did during his time, you know, I think earlier I made mention that he was not doing it for his personal gain. So he was doing all what he could to make Ghana a better place for all of us to live in. But now it is not like that at all. It is not like that. If we talk of in terms of technology, we can say, well, you know, now we are in a very modernized world than those days. But in terms of... Um, let's say, uh, development and stuff, you can see that Nkrumah's time was actually the best, the best. They, I didn't witness Nkrumah, but for the few things I've heard he, he did, and that time he was doing all those stuff, I feel then was better because when you look at spending, now things, cost of living is high. One were the days, if you have small paper like 5,000, 2,000, you can do a lot with it. But now... You can't do a lot with it because the current um, president and the ministers keeps keep on increasing stuff, which makes current situation in Ghana very, you know, high. Cost of living is high. But when I look back at then, come on, I feel when our daddies and mummies, they were not spending much because everybody used to have garden behind the houses and all that. But you see, I don't know what I'm saying now. You can't even have a garden unless you go to your village or something. So I feel comparing now to first then I don't think then the cost of living was high. I, I would say that despite all that I was told about him, man had vision. Um, let me give it to him because I believe we are still enjoying a lot of the foundations that he built for the country. And one would have thought that after 67 years of independence, if you look at the journey, then the changes should be monumental. Like it should cascade into something that is even unimaginable because, you know, we started this whole trend of independence in Africa. If you also look at what even the people that got independence behind us or after us have achieved, you realize that for some reason we haven't fully leveraged that earlier exposure that we had from our early independence. His vision we are still living on but making it better i would say we haven't fully tapped into what the potential of that independence should have been the beans were shocked by the responses they received so they further asked the people what's going on in ghana now life living in ghana now it's not that easy 
Sometimes the distance, the economy is very hard, especially with those who don't do anything, like who, just, who are just in their house. Espe- no, most especially the guys, those who just take drugs, abuse, eat, like something. Most of them, they don't find life easy. Even though we, we those manage small, small, we, too, we don't find life easy. Also, the government is distant. Because uh, most of the distant, the people here, out of 100%, maybe I can say 50% are not educated. And sometimes, how to go to the school, maybe the, um, the materials needed to go to school is a problem. And sometimes, when they go to school, SHS level, to proceed is a problem too. Like, their fees and the rest is a problem too. So, mm-hmm. but when the government helps in those things, there is a distant um, comfort, like what they have been doing. Mm-hmm. and f- girl education and like when the government also uh, like add more values to them or support them regularly i think it will be better i think that growing up knowing that most of the responsibilities fell on my parents i just got to enjoy the little things and also growing up in a town like kufridia where we had light and water 24 7 life wasn't really a struggle then even going to school was at a very short distance but then growing up as an adult and living in Accra and seeing how things are done, I feel like um, some of our leaders force, because if I look at the time of Kufuor to Atamils, I feel like they were good leaders who wanted the country to go forward. Because, for example, when Atamil suddenly decided that he was going to check out all these corruptions in the ministries and stuff and, you know, rectify things, see the way um, suddenly we we're all alarmed. Um, Kufuor brought a lot of development, but like the new leaders... It's like nobody is held accountable. So people come, make promises, and then they just disappear. Every time there's a new um, president or new party, there's, there's all this auditing and all that. We realize that a lot of money is, has been lost, but nobody has been held accountable. Nobody has been arrested or asked to refund the money. Where is our money? Like money just keeps going and nobody is held accountable. But wait, aren't the people the ones who pick their leaders? Yeah. Every four years, they do something called voting to pick a leader. This year is actually their election year, so they have the chance to pick a new leader. Especially since they don't seem too happy. According to trusted sources, NDC and NPP were the two primary parties in Ghana's politics. Whether NPP or NDC are the same thing. When they all come, it's the same old story. Just that sometimes, you know, someone will come and be a little bit better than the other. But from my, for, for me, I'll say NDC. Yeah, because my mom is NDC. <laughs> so all the time when you're in the house, NDC, 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 NDC and stuff. So automatically, I, I just, you know, fell in love with the party. I will vote for this thing, NDC. Because what I heard, um, last four years, what I heard, they said, John Dramani Mahama picked a lady as vice president. I felt like when time comes, I felt, I just, I just want lady to be president in Ghana and I'll see how life will be. So growing up, um, I've been MPP all my life, right? I had come to believe that Anybody on the other side couldn't be up to any good. But growing up and being assertive and being discerning, I've just come to realize that I don't think I belong to any particular party because now I realize that I am critiquing anybody that is not doing right. And then I am just for who is out to do real good. If I'm to choose, I'll go for NDC because looking at... um, President at a miss time. I think things were far better than now. Yes, things were cool, though it was not easy, but it was cool as compared to this our current president being in power. Okay, the first time I voted was eight years ago when I voted for a Kufuado. I voted for him because of the free SHS. My our last born was 
about to go to SHS and I didn't want my mom to struggle in paying school fees. So that was the only reason why I voted for a Kufuado. And the main, when, before I started voting, I saw him when he was campaigning to be flag bearer of the NPP and I liked his campaign. I was like, who is this guy talking? He sounded like a very intelligent man who knows what he was doing. I fell in love with him then, then. And then also as part of his, I don't know if I should call it policy or agenda, he said he was coming to arrest or maybe fight and um, corruption. So that was what I was looking for for him to do come and find out who stole the money where did this go to at least arrest people and let us know that people are being held accountable but i don't follow his work for the past eight years but apart from the free shs which that one we're even struggling i've not heard or seen anyone being arrested for corruption and i feel like he failed me drastically i i don't follow any party but i've observed ndc npp and i think they are all the same they are all wicked people so I am telling the whole general public, every citizen, to join the new force. Because if these two parties are saying the new force is a scam, then they are the bigger scam. Because we've given them power, they've scammed us, they don't even give us what we want. New force, come, we will follow you. It seems like a non-traditional contender has stepped into Ghana's politics. Who is this person? They call themselves and their movement the new force. Are the people even aware of his presence? Well... Let's see how much the people know. The new force and brush. No, I haven't seen it before. Funny enough, I didn't know anything about, about that force. I think um, early this year, I went to Accra and I, was, I, I saw a lot of signboards like something, something force. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really get the name. So I was thinking that maybe it's either a movie or something that they want to premiere or something. So it's late, it was later on I saw that um, votes Pediakon as president. Actually, I, I don't really know who he is. I don't know the party. And I've not also really seen him doing this campaign and all this stuff. So actually, I, I don't really have much idea of him. Yeah. I've heard about New Force, I've seen the billboard, but I really do not have a lot of information. All I know is there's a billboard with New Force on it. And uh, what's, I've forgotten his name, is the one behind it, but I don't have much information. All I know is he's rich and has a, this Oxford Street building and that he's coming, he comes from a family of wealth and he flaunts it. I don't really know him as a, whether he's going to be good as a president or not, or if he has a capacity to be a president. I've heard of the new force. And first, I, I saw the billboard and stuff. I was like, hey, which traditionalist do you people with this? But getting to know the person behind the marks, I've known Kwame Bedi Akun for a very long time. I feel he's a young, successful person. So he coming home to invest on the motherland, I feel that guy have a positive mind. Wherever he got the knowledge and the money from, I don't care. He's a positive guy, and I feel when we give him the chance, he can do more. What about the people that was grown and they did everything here and they had the chance and the money? We gave them the chance to rule us and do things for us to be okay. They didn't do it right before our eyes. So I feel Kwame Bedi Akon is a man we have to go for. We have to test new waters. And this is what I hope everybody will like it. So let's give him a chance. At the stage where we are at, Ghanaians are looking for anything that can offer hope or anyone that looks like can offer them any hope. So for the new force, I think that it is offering to young Ghanaians an opportunity to demand what is right for them. Like this is your country. You cannot be living in poverty. You already have too much that you should be comfortable with, but why are you so poor? So I think that message he has and why he calls it the new force resonates a lot a lot with the younger people. I, I think that for the older ones and people in the rural areas, they may not know anything about it. But if you go even on social and you do any form of social listening, you realize that his message is resonating well. I think that the latest developments where it looked like the government has been picking on him has served as really good PR for him because he's had a sympathetic ear from the youth and so people are beginning to support him in um, huge numbers in ways that you cannot imagine. People are forming WhatsApp groups, social media groups just to support him because they said what? You've given it to the old people and they couldn't do better. Maybe it's time to give to a young fresh blood and see what he can do for young people in the country. Am I sold on his 
approach and campaign and ideologist like i said i don't have a party he isn't a political party he keeps saying that so i would i would say that i would just wait it out and see what my spirit tells me to do at this point i, I don't see me saying anyone is good to go well this year is their election year i wonder what will make the people of ghana happy i want ghana to be more mm, Currently, there's no employment in the system. So I really want the government to look into that because you can suffer paying fees, I mean, learning, studying all your life, and you complete without getting a well-paid job. So currently, I want the government to look into that. The one thing that I, I really want Ghana to do is one, to create more jobs for the youth and also our educational system. They should work on it. It's like any government that comes on has his own way of handling the educational system. It's like they are just playing with our educational system. Nothing is really going on. Now they said um, double track system. A double track system, we don't have enough school schools around whereby you can say, okay, we are working on that. Whereby when students go, they are okay. Some students will even go to school. Just imagine even during our time whereby we go to school, we vacate within a month or maybe three weeks, we come back. Look at the way things were. And now students who will, 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 will vacate, be in the house for three, four months, right? <laughs> you know, so let's assume if maybe such students don't really have the financial support to actually get teachers to go for, for extra classes with them, what happens with them? Does that mean? And it's not like that of the tertiary cycle whereby you say, okay, what we learned this semester, we are no more doing it. We've thrown it away. We are doing a different one. SS... Whatever you did in Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, in your final year, they, they are going to set questions based on that. Whether you've covered it or not, they are going to set questions on that. So just imagine a student who, in one way or the other, they've not been able to cover all their syllables and they are going to write exams on things they don't know. At the end, they will fail and the blame will be pushed on the students and also the teachers. Meanwhile, our education system is not working. So if you put things in order very well, I think... I believe in one way or the other, the country will grow to the level that we all want it or we all expect it. You know, in Ghana here, we have a lot of resources, but just that we don't have um, good leaders to lead it or like those who have the knowledge. So it makes the resources to waste. For instance, by now, like when you know something more than me and our family or like maybe I belong to... Um, one of the politician party. They, meanwhile, you know the thing more than me. Like, they will not come and leave me and choose you. They will rather choose me and leave you because we are related. So if all those things stop, I think Ghana will be also much developed than this. I, I would say that if people were to see the ordinary Ghanaian, like if I were to see that I am responsible for the next person, right? And not think about, okay, this is, let me take this for myself. If I were to see that I am responsible for everyone else, I think that things would be better because you would be thinking for yourself and then you'd be thinking for your neighbor. And so I, I feel like in Ghana right now, people should take the my brother's keeper kind of approach because you know what? If everybody you see is your brother, you put him bigger efforts to ensure that maybe um, you are giving what you would have given your blood brother. You are taking care of the person. And then people may not be as selfish as they are currently, honestly. Because I think our problem in this country is just greed, man. Ghana, I think we have to look into the policies and everything. We have to make the system such a way that if you are working for somebody as a cleaner, you can be able to pay your rent and give your mom and daddy something at the end of the month. So they don't think you are useless or something. The system is making a lot of people feel useless. You can be here, my dear. You can get your master's and degree. You will not make any money in Ghana. When we balance the system, come on, trust me, nobody will be able to, nobody will even like to even go and get visa to travel. We'll make the money here, go outside, holidays, spend some time, spend in those countries and come back. For, us to, for them to also know that we coming from Africa, we don't just come there to work out something we come there to spend for their money or their gdp to also raise you, you get my point i want a change in leadership 
I want a leader who d- says I will do this and will make sure it's done. A leader who makes sure that um, the agenda he has set, all his team members, right from the top to the bottom, are championing that. I want a leader who holds his team members accountable. If it's a sports minister or if it's the minister of defense or foreign, whoever it is, they should make sure that they are being held accountable. Let me be sure that the, the people are working. They are working for the people, not for, the, for their pockets. A president who is not selfish. Because the greediness, that we are all greedy, power corrupts. But if you're able to control yourself and, and know that you are here for the people, not for your pockets, that is what I'm hoping for Ghana. And to be in the first few years, fix the basic things we need, like water, road, light. Let's be able to move from one place to the other easy. Because I feel like if the roads get fixed and I get to work faster, I'm, I'm well able to work more. But if I'm wasting all the time in traffic, I'm not. I'm less productive. I don't know if they don't understand that if people are comfortable, they will do more. You can even add more tax taxes because they know that their money is being put to good use. But if I'm doing all this plus e levy and I have to sit in traffic, the shortest distance spent spend about twenty minutes before I even hit the main road. It's sad. It's really sad. They should just because we are not asking for a lot. In other countries that are well developed, they are asking for the moon and the stars because they've reached there. But we, 2024, we don't have water 24 seven. Lights go off and nobody is prompted. Just like nobody will prompt. It's it's not nice. The disrespect to Ghanaians is terrible. Despite the peaceful state of the nation, it seemed like the people were not happy. Thank you for your time. Unfortunately, we have to leave now. We don't know what the future holds for Ghana, but we invite the world to pay close attention to what becomes of this nation. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Ufahamu Africa. You can find more episodes, show notes, and transcripts on our website, ufahamuafrica.com. This podcast is produced and managed by Megan DeMitt, with help from production assistants Chukwu Fananya Kachukwu, Alex Kozak, Harry Stoltz, and Michere Muguero. Our non-resident podcast fellows are Ami Tamaklo, Vu Sedu, Exidi Olagu, Basil Ibrahim, and Hopalong Batul Kane. We are generously supported by the Carnegie Corporation of New York and receive research assistance from Cornell University and the University of California, Riverside. Our music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. Until next week, Safiri Salama. Salama.